With these can-do videos, you'll see real-life situations where you have to introduce yourself, talk about your family, or give your contact information. So, by the end, you can do them yourself in French. This video is a small portion of our can-do course. To get the full course, including translations, grammar tools, and assessment tests, click the link in the description. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to make small talk about the weather. This is Karen Lee. She sees her neighbor, Fleur Toussaint, and starts a conversation by saying, It's hot today. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Listen to the conversation and focus on Karen's comment. Ready? Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Oui, en effet. Once more with the English translation. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. It's hot today. Oui, en effet. Yes, indeed. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our CanDo course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Karen says, It's hot today. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Let's start with the word chaud, meaning hot, as in the temperature. Chaud, chaud. Before chaud is il fait. Literally, it makes, but translates as it's in this context. Il fait. First is il, it, il, il. Next is fait, translating as is in this context. Fait, fait. Note, fait is from the verb faire, meaning to do or to make. But in this instance, when talking about the weather, it translates as to be. Faire. Last is aujourd'hui meaning today. Aujourd'hui. Aujourd'hui. All together. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Literally, it makes hot today, but translates as, it's hot today. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Fleur Toussaint says, yes, indeed. Oui, en effet. This starts with the expression Oui, meaning yes. Oui. Oui. After this, En effet. Literally, in fact, or, in this case, a more natural translation, indeed. En effet. En effet. Altogether, Oui, en effet. Yes, indeed. Oui, en effet. The pattern is Il fait adjective aujourd'hui. It is adjective today. Il fait adjective aujourd'hui. 
To use this pattern, simply replace the adjective placeholder with a suitable adjective. In this lesson, you'll learn adjectives related to the weather that you can use with this pattern. Imagine it's cold. Froid. Cold. Froid. Froid. Say, it's cold today. Ready? Il fait froid aujourd'hui. It's cold today. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. In French, you can't use any adjective with a construction il fait. It's restricted to a small set of adjectives, such as the adjectives covered in this lesson and some others. Mauvais. Bad weather. Lourd. Heavy, sultry. Gris. Gray. Other adjectives appear in more complex sentences or different patterns altogether. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Il fait frais aujourd'hui. Il fait frais aujourd'hui. Il fait beau aujourd'hui. Il fait beau aujourd'hui. Il fait tellement chaud. Il fait tellement chaud. Did you notice how I added tellement in the last sentence? Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our Can Do course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Il fait tellement chaud. It's so hot. Il fait tellement chaud. Tellement is an intensifier, and it translates as so, as in so hot in this case. Simply add it in front of the adjective to express a high degree of intensity. The pattern is tellement, adjective. So, adjective. Tellement, adjective. Let's review the key vocabulary. Chaud. Hot. Chaud. Chaud. Froid. Cold. Froid. Froid. Beau. Nice weather. Beau. Beau. Frais. Cool weather. Frais. Frais. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me. Focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say hot? Chaud. Chaud. And how to say today? Aujourd'hui. Aujourd'hui. Do you remember how Karen Lee says, It's hot today. Il fait 
fait chaud aujourd'hui. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Do you remember how Fleur Toussaint says? Yes, indeed. Oui, en effet. Oui, en effet. Do you remember how to say cold? Froid. Froid. And how to say nice? Beau. Beau. Let's practice. Imagine your fleu. Comment to Karen on the cold weather today. Ready? Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Oui, en effet. Listen again and repeat. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Il fait froid aujourd'hui. Let's try another. Imagine you're Ben Lee. Comment to your classmate on the hot weather today. Ready? Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Oui, en effet. Listen again and repeat. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Il fait chaud aujourd'hui. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark Lee. Comment to your neighbor on the nice weather today. Ready? Il fait beau aujourd'hui. Oui. En effet. Il fait beau aujourd'hui. Il fait beau aujourd'hui. As in many countries, starting a conversation with some remark about the weather is very common. So don't hesitate to use this pattern to start a conversation. France's climate is temperate. The South is famous for its sunny and hot summers, while the Brittany region, La Bretagne, is often perceived as a region where it rains continuously. This is the end of this lesson. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Now you know how to give an opinion about the weather in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you learn how to talk about the weather in French. This is Karen Lee, and she's in sunny Paris. She's on a long distance call with Mathilde Martin, her former homestay mother. Mathilde asks, How's the weather? Quel temps fait-il? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Ready? Quel temps fait-il? Il fait beau. 
once more with the English translation. Quel temps fait-il? How's the weather? Il fait beau. It's nice weather. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Matilda asks, How's the weather? Quel temps fait-il? Let's start with the word temps, meaning weather. Temps. Temps. In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Temps is masculine and singular, a fact which will determine the form of other words in the sentence. Before temps is quel, what. Quel, quel, quel is masculine and singular to agree with temps. Together, it's quel temps. What weather? Quel temps. Next is fait-il. Literally makes it, but translates as is it in this context. Fait-il. First is fait. Translating as is in this context. Fait. Fait. Note. Fait. Is from the verb. Faire. Meaning to do or to make. But in this instance, when talking about the weather, it translates as to be. Faire. After. Fait. Is the subject pronoun. Il. Translating as it in this context. Il. Il. Notice the word order when asking a question. Verb. Fait. Followed by the subject. Il. Fait-il. When this inverted word order occurs in French, there must be a hyphen between the verb and the subject. As in. Fait-il. Altogether, it's. Quel temps fait-il? Literally, what weather makes it, but translates as, how's the weather? Quel temps fait-il? Pronunciation note. Notice the rising intonation indicating a question. Quel temps fait-il? Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Karen says, it's nice weather? Il fait beau. First is il. It. Il. Il. Next is fait. Translating as is in this context. Fait. Fait. Last is beau. Beautiful or nice, as in nice weather. Bo. Bo. Altogether, it's. Il fait beau. Literally, it does nice weather, but it translates as, it's nice weather. Il fait beau. The pattern is. Il fait weather adjective. It is weather adjective. Il fait weather adjective. To use this pattern, simply replace the weather adjective placeholder with a suitable adjective. In this lesson, you'll learn adjectives related to the weather that you can use with this pattern. Imagine it's bad weather. Mauvais. 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 Say, it's bad weather. Ready? Il fait mauvais. It's bad weather. Il fait mauvais. In French, you can't use any adjective with the construction il fait. It's restricted to a small set of adjectives, 
such as the adjectives covering this lesson and some others. Chaud, hot, froid, cold, frais, cool, lourd, heavy, sultry, gris, gray. When talking about the weather, it's common to use some impersonal verbs in French. Impersonal verbs are verbs without a fully stated subject and which are conjugated in the third person singular. For example, it's raining in French is Il pleut. Il pleut. It's raining. Il pleut. First is Il. It. Il. Il. Next is Pleut. Rains, as in it rains. Pleu. Pleu is from the verb pleuvoir to rain. Pleuvoir. Together, il pleut. Literally, it rains, but it translates as it's raining. Il pleut. Pay attention, you'll see another example of this pattern shortly. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Il fait beau. Il fait beau. Il fait froid. Il fait froid. Il fait chaud. Il fait chaud. Il pleut. Il pleut. Il neige. Il neige. Can you guess what the last sentence means? Il neige. It's snowing. Il neige. Literally, it means it snows, but it translates as it's snowing. Il neige. Il neige. First is il. It. Il. Il. Next is neige. Snows, as in it snows. Neige. Neige is from the verb neiger to snow. Neiger. Together, il neige. It's snowing. Il neige. Let's review the key words. Froid. Cold. Froid. Froid. Chaud. Hot. Chaud. Chaud. Pleuvoir. To rain. Pleuvoir. Pleuvoir. Il pleut. It's raining. Il pleut. Il pleut. Neiger. To snow. Neiger. Neiger. Il neige. It's snowing. Il neige. Il neige. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say nice, as in nice weather? Beau. Beau. Do you remember how Karen Lee says, it's nice weather?
Il fait beau. Il fait beau. Do you remember how to say weather? Temps. Temps. And how to say what? Quel. Quel. Do you remember how Mathilde asks, how's the weather? Quel temps fait-il? Quel temps fait-il? Do you remember how to say, it's raining? Il pleut. Il pleut. Do you remember how to say cold? Froid. Froid. And how to say hot? Chaud. Chaud. Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Lee, and it's raining. Respond to the question. Ready? Quel temps fait-il? Il pleut. Listen again and repeat. Il pleut. Il pleut. Let's try another. Imagine you're Mathilde, and it's hot. Ready? Quel temps fait-il? Il fait chaud. Listen again and repeat. Il fait chaud. Il fait chaud. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Oog Henry, and it's cold. Ready? Quel temps fait-il? Il fait froid. Listen again and repeat. Il fait froid. Il fait froid. This is the end of this lesson. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Now you know how to talk about the weather in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for clarification. This is Sasha Lee, and she meets her neighbor, Theodore Toussaint, for the first time in the lobby of their building. Theodore introduces himself by saying, Nice to meet you. My name is Theodore. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Theodore. Sasha can't catch his name and asks for clarification. Listen to the conversation and focus on Sasha's request. Ready? 
Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter Je m'appelle Théodore. Once more with the English translation. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Nice to meet you. My name is Theodore. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter Excuse me, can you repeat that Je m'appelle Théodore. My name is Theodore. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Theodore introduces himself? Nice to meet you. My name is Theodore. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. First is Enchanté. Meaning glad. Enchanté. Enchanté. Enchanté is actually a shortened form of Enchanté de vous rencontrer. Meaning glad to meet you. Enchanté de vous rencontrer. Theodore uses a shortened version. Enchanté. In his introduction. This is the standard version when meeting someone for the first time. And is appropriate for both informal and formal situations. Next is. Je m'appelle Théodore. My name is Theodore. Je m'appelle Théodore. First is. Je. I. Je. Je. Next is. M'appelle. Which translates as. Call myself. M'appelle. M'appelle. Note. Me. Is contracted with. Appel. To form. M'appelle. Me. 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 Next is. Appel. Call. As in, I call. Appel. 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 Is from the verb. Appeler. Meaning to call. Appeler. Together. M'appel. Call myself. M'appelle. After is Theodore's given name. Théodore. Théodore. Note, Theodore only uses his given name. Sasha and Theodore are young adults in an informal situation, so he only uses his given name. Together it's... Je m'appelle Théodore. Literally, I call myself Theodore but translates as, My name is Theodore. Je m'appelle Théodore. Altogether. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Nice to meet you. My name is Theodore. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Sasha can't catch his name. Do you remember how she asks, Excuse me, can you repeat that? Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? First is Excuse-moi. Excuse me. Excuse-moi. Excuse-moi. Note Excuse-moi is the informal form of excuse me in this conversation. Theodore and Sasha are of similar age, so the informal Excuse-moi is more natural. Next is peu can as in can you peu 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 is from the verb pouvoir to be able pouvoir next is tu you tu tu together it's peux tu can you Peux-tu? Peux-tu? Notice the word order when asking a question. Verb, 
Pe, followed by the subject. Tu, peux tu. In this case, when this inverted word order occurs in French, there is a hyphen between the verb and the subject. Last is. Répéter. Repeat. Répéter. Répéter. Note the verb. Répéter. To repeat is in its infinitive form. Altogether. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Literally. Excuse me, can you repeat? But it translates as. Excuse me, can you repeat that? Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Pronunciation note. Notice the rising intonation indicating a question. Finally, do you remember how Theodore says, My name is Theodore. Hint, you've heard it before. Je m'appelle Theodore. My name is Theodore. Je m'appelle Theodore. In this lesson, you learn how to ask for clarification in an informal situation. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excuse me, can you repeat? To ask for clarification in a formal situation. Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Excuse me, can you repeat? Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Note the following changes in the formal form. First, Excusez-moi replaces Excuse-moi. Excusez-moi. Excuse me. In the formal form. Excusez-moi. Second. Pouvez-vous. Replaces. Peux-tu. Pouvez-vous. Can you. When using formal French. Pouvez-vous. Pouvez-vous. Pouvez. Is from the verb. Pouvoir. Meaning to be able. Pouvoir. Next is vous, a formal form for you, which is singular in this context. Vous is the second person plural word for you, but in formal contexts can be used with just one person. Let's look at the expressions once more. Listen and repeat. Excuse-moi. Excuse-moi. Peux-tu répéter? Peux-tu répéter? Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. Pouvez-vous répéter? Pouvez-vous répéter? Excusez-moi. Pouvez-vous répéter? Excusez-moi. Pouvez-vous répéter? Je ne comprends pas. Je ne comprends pas. Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Did you notice the new phrases I used? Je ne comprends pas. I don't understand. Je ne comprends pas. Je ne comprends pas. Next is. Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Can you speak more slowly? Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? First is. Pouvez-vous? Can you? Formal form. 
Pouvez-vous? Next is Parler. Speak. Parler. Parler. After this is Plus. More. Plus. Plus. Finally. Lentement. Slowly. Lentement. Lentement. All together. Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Can you speak more slowly? Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? For now, please remember. Je ne comprends pas. And. Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? As set phrases. Let's review the key vocabulary. Parler. Speak. Parler. Parler. Plus. More. Plus. Plus. Lentement. Slowly. Lentement. Lentement. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember the informal way to say, excuse me? Excuse-moi. Excuse-moi. And how to say, repeat? Répétez. Répétez. Do you remember how Sasha asks, Excuse me, can you repeat? Remember, she uses informal French. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excuse-moi. Peux-tu répéter? Do you remember how to say Nice to meet you? Enchanté. Enchanté. And do you remember how Théodore says Nice to meet you. My name is Théodore. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Do you remember how to say speak? Parler. Parler. And how to say more? Plus. Plus. Do you remember how to say slowly? Lentement. Lentement. And how to say, can you speak more slowly? In a formal way. Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Let's practice. Imagine you're Ben Lee. Theodore introduces himself, but you can't catch his name. Start with, excuse me, and ask him to repeat it using informal French. Ready? Enchanté. Je m'appelle Théodore. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Listen again and repeat. Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Excuse-moi. 
Excuse-moi, peux-tu répéter? Let's try another. Imagine you're Theodore. Karen Lee introduces herself, but you can't catch her name. Use formal French. Ready? Enchanté, je m'appelle Karen Lee. Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Listen again and repeat. Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous répéter? Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark Lee. Ask Fleur Toussaint to speak more slowly. Ready? Enchanté, je m'appelle Fleur Toussaint. Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Listen again and repeat. Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? Pouvez-vous parler plus lentement? This is the end of this lesson. Now, here is what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Now you know how to ask for clarification in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you will learn how to ask what a word is in French. This is Ben Lee, and he's at a cafe doing a language exchange with his classmate, Justine Jérôme. It's the French portion of the exchange. And he points at the textbook and asks, How do you say book in French? Comment dit-on book en français? Listen to the conversation and focus on the question. Ready? Comment dit-on book en français? On dit livre. Once more with the English translation. Comment dit-on book en français? How do you say book in French? On dit livre. You say book. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Ben asks, how do you say book in French? Comment dit-on book en français? The standard way to ask for the meaning of a word in French follows a simple pattern. First is Comment? Translating as how in this context. Comment? Comment? Next is Dit-on? One says Dit-on? Dit. Says, as in one says. Dit. Dit. Dit is from the verb dire, meaning to say. Dire. Next is on. One, as in one says. On. On. Together, comment dit-on? Literally, how says one, but it translates as how does one say. Comment dit-on? 
Note the word order when asking a question. Verb followed by the subject. Dit-on. In this case. When this inverted word order occurs in French, there is a hyphen between the verb and the subject. After this is the English word, book. Last is the phrase, En français. In French. En français. First is, En. In. En. En. After this is, Français. French, as in the French language. Français. Français. Note, when the context is clear, you may omit En français. Altogether, Comment dit-on book en français? Literally, how one says book in French, but translates as How do you say book in French? Comment dit-on book en français? Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Justine says, you say book? On dit livre. First is, on dit, which literally means, one says, but translates here as, you say. On dit. On dit. After this is the answer to the question. Livre. Book. Livre. Livre. Altogether, on dit livre. Literally, one says book, but it translates as, you say book. On dit livre. The pattern is, Comment dit-on English word en français? How do you say English word in French? Comment dit-on English word en français? To use this pattern, simply replace the English word placeholder with the word you want to know. Imagine you want to know the French word for pen. Ask, how do you say pen in French? Ready? Comment dit-on pen en français? How do you say pen in French? Comment dit-on pen en français? This lesson introduces the grammatically complex but commonly used pattern, the impersonal form with on. The on construction is used to express what people do in general, rather than point to a specific person. The pattern is on plus a verb in the third singular person. The example used in the lesson was on dit, one says. Let's quickly look at a few more examples. On appelle, one calls, as in one calls it book. On mange, one eats, as in one eats a lot at Christmas. On dort, one sleeps, as in one sleeps late on Saturday. Also note that all nouns in French have grammatical gender. When learning new words, it's often important to identify this gender so that you can remember how to use it in the future. One simple way to do this is to follow up after someone tells you what a word is in French. You can simply say un ou une after being told the word to clarify if it's masculine or feminine. If the person responds with un, you know it's masculine. And if they say une, it's feminine. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Comment dit-on book en français? On dit livre. Comment dit-on book en français? Comment dit-on pen en français? On dit stylo. Comment dit-on pen en français? Comment dit-on bague 
on dit sac. Comment dit-on bag? Comment dit-on pencil en français? On dit crayon. Comment dit-on pencil en français? Comment appelle-t-on ça? On appelle ça livre. Comment appelle-t-on ça? Did you notice how I use a different sentence pattern? Comment appelle-t-on ça? How do you call this? Comment appelle-t-on ça? This literally means how calls one this. But it translates as how do you call this? To create this pattern, replace D says with appel calls appel appel Note also the t between the verb and the subject. It's added to help make pronunciation easier. Also, replace the English word this with ça. 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 Recall. En français. In French. May be omitted if understood from context. Comment appelle-t-on ça? How do you call this? Comment appelle-t-on ça? This is a very useful pattern for using French to learn French. Do you remember the response? You call this book. On appelle ça livre. First is On appelle Which literally means one calls. But translates here as You call. On appelle. On appelle. Next is ça. This. Ça. Ça. After this is the answer to the question. Livre. Book. Livre. Altogether. On appelle ça livre. Literally, one calls this book. But it translates as You call this book. Let's review the key vocabulary. Sac. Bag. Sac. Sac. Un sac. A bag. Stylo. Pen. Stylo. Stylo. Un stylo. A pen. Crayon. Pencil. Crayon. Crayon. Un crayon. A pencil. Ça. This. Ça. Ça. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say French, as in the language? Français. Français. And how to say in French? En français. En français. Do you remember how to say how? Comment? Comment? Do you remember how Ben asks, how do you say book in French? Comment dit-on book en français? Comment dit-on 
book en français. Do you remember how to say book? Livre. Livre. And do you remember how Justine says? You say book. On dit livre. On dit Livre. Do you remember how to say this? Ça. Ça. And how to say, how do you call this? Comment appelle-t-on ça? Comment appelle-t-on ça? Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Lee, and you're having a language exchange lunch with Pauline Petit. You point to the pen and ask, how do you say pen in French? Ready? Comment dit-on pen en français? On dit stylo. Listen again and repeat. Comment dit-on peine en français? Comment dit-on peine en français? Now you want to know the word for bag. Omit in French. Ready? Comment dit-on bag? On dit sac. Listen again and repeat. Comment dit-on bag? Comment dit-on bag? Let's try one more. Imagine you're Sasha Lee, and you're studying with your classmate. Point at a pencil and ask, what do you call this? Ready? Comment appelle-t-on ça? On appelle ça crayon. Listen again and repeat. Comment appelle-t-on ça? Comment appelle-t-on ça? This is the end of this lesson. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Now you know how to ask how you say something in French. That's how there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Can Do French by FrenchPod101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for something at a grocery store. This is Ben Lee, and he's at a small grocery store. After finding something he likes, he points and says, I would like this, please. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Listen to the conversation. Focus on Ben's request. Ready? Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Et voici. Once more, with the English translation. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. I would like this, please. Et voici. Here you are.
Let's take a closer look at how Ben asks for an item without knowing its name. Do you remember how Ben Lee says, I would like this, please? Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. The standard way of asking for something follows a simple pattern. First is, Je. I. Je. Je. Next is, Voudrais. Would like. Voudrais. 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 Is a form of the verb, Vouloir. Meaning to want. Vouloir. Next is, Ceci. This. Ceci. Ceci. Last is the phrase, S'il vous plaît. Please. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Altogether it's, Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. I would like this, please. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Using Je voudrais To ask for something is rather polite, and it's commonly used in formal situations, like restaurants, shops, and so on. Do you remember how the clerk says, Here you are. Et voici. Et voici. Literally means, and there, but it translates as, here you are, in this situation. Et voici. Et voici. Note, sometimes you may hear, Et voilà. Instead of, Et voici. Both expressions mean exactly the same thing. The pattern is Je voudrais item, s'il vous plaît. I would like item, please. Je voudrais item, s'il vous plaît. To use this pattern, simply replace the item placeholder with the thing you want. Imagine you'd like something from across the room. The pronoun to indicate something far from a speaker is Cela. That. Cela. Cela. Say, I would like that, please. Ready? Je voudrais cela, s'il vous plaît. I would like that, please. Je voudrais cela, s'il vous plaît. The following phrases can be used to refer to an item without knowing its name in French. Je voudrais ceci. I'd like this. Je voudrais cela. I'd like that. Even if you don't know the name of an item, and consequently its gender, you can use these pronouns as they are the same for both masculine and feminine nouns. For items that are plural, use ceci or these as a default. Ceci. And use cela or those for things that are far from you. Cela. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais cela, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais cela, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais cela, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais cela, s'il vous plaît. Ceci, s'il vous plaît. Ceci, s'il vous plaît. Did you notice how I use a certain sentence pattern? Ceci, s'il vous plaît. This, please. 
Ceci, s'il vous plaît. First is. Ceci. This. Ceci. Next is. S'il vous plaît. Please. S'il vous plaît. Together. Ceci, s'il vous plaît. This, please. Ceci, s'il vous plaît. This simple and convenient phrase can be used while pointing to something or referring to something close to you that you'd like to have. Let's review the key words. Cela. That. Cela. Cela. Ceci. These. Ceci. Ceci. Cela. Those. Cela. Cela. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say, please? S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. And how to say, this? Ceci. Ceci. Do you remember how to say I? Je. Je. Do you remember how Ben says I would like this, please? Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Do you remember how the clerk says, Here you are. Et voici. Et voici. When you don't know the name of something, do you remember the word for that? Cela. Cela. When you don't know the name of something, do you remember the word for these? Ceci. Ceci. Let's practice. Imagine you're Ben, and you're at the grocery store to buy some bread, but you don't know the word. Point at it and say, I would like this, please. Ready? Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Et voici. Listen again and repeat. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Let's try another. Imagine you're Sasha, and you see some small snacks you'd like to try. Ask for these. Ready? Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Et voici. Listen again and repeat. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Karen, and you see a sandwich in the showcase behind the counter. Ask for that. Ready? Je voudrais cela, s'il vous plaît. Et voici. Listen again and repeat. Je voudrais cela, s'il vous plaît.
Je voudrais cela, s'il vous plaît. Ceci and cela are very polite ways to refer to an item you don't know. In a more colloquial way, it is possible to use ça instead of ceci and cela. Although this is more colloquial, its use is really easy, as it doesn't depend on gender. Therefore, je voudrais ceci s'il vous plaît, or je voudrais cela s'il vous plaît, can just become je voudrais ça s'il vous plaît. This is the end of this lesson. Now you know how to ask for something at a grocery store in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. With these can-do videos, you'll see real-life situations where you have to introduce yourself, talk about your family, or give your contact information. So, by the end, you can do them yourself in French. This video is a small portion of our CanDo course. To get the full course, including translations, grammar tools, and assessment tests, click the link in the description. Welcome to CanDo French by FrenchBot101.com. Bonjour à tous, je suis Lia Mercier. Hi everyone, I'm Lia Mercier. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask if a store has something. This is Sasha Lee. She's at a small grocery store and wants to buy some salt. She gets the clerk's attention and says, Excuse me, do you have any salt? Excusez-moi, avez-vous du sel? Listen to the conversation and focus on the question. Ready? Excusez-moi. Avez-vous du sel? Oui, c'est ici. Once more with the English translation. Excusez-moi, avez-vous du sel? Excuse me, do you have any salt? Oui, c'est ici. Yes, it's here. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our CanDo course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Sasha asks, Excuse me, do you have any salt? Excusez-moi, avez-vous du sel? Let's start with Excusez-moi. Excuse me. Excusez-moi. First is Excusez. Meaning, excuse. Excusez. Excusez. Next is. Moi. Me. Moi. Moi. Together. Excusez-moi. Excuse me. Excusez-moi. Note, you may be familiar with. Excuse-moi the informal form of excuse me. In this conversation, Sasha is speaking with someone she doesn't know, so she uses the formal form. Excusez-moi. Next is Avez. Meaning, you have. Avez. Avez. Avez is from the verb 
Avoir. To have. Avoir. After this is. Vous. You. Vous. Vous. Note. Vous. Is the plural form of you, as in you all. But here, it's the formal way to address a single person. Vous. Vous. Together. Avez-vous? Is the formal way to say, do you have? After that is, du sel. Translating as, any salt, in this context. Du sel. Translation note. Du sel can translate as some salt or any salt, depending on the context. Here, in the question format, any salt is a more natural translation. Let's start with sel. Salt. Sel. Sel. In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Sel is masculine and singular, a fact that will determine the form of other words in the sentence. Before sel is the article du. Du is masculine and singular to agree with sel. Du is a contraction of de and le. Literally, of de the le. But think of it like some or any in English. Du. 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 Together. Du sel. Translating as any salt in this context. Du sel. Altogether. Excusez-moi, avez-vous du sel? Excuse me, do you have any salt? Excusez-moi, avez-vous du sel? Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how the shop clerk says, Yes, it's here. Oui, c'est ici. This starts with Oui. Yes. Oui. Oui. It answers Sasha's question. Excusez-moi. Avez-vous du sel? Excuse me, do you have any salt? Next is... C'est. It's. C'est. C'est. Note. C'est. Is a contraction of the expression... Ce. It. And... Est. Is. C'est is shortened for easier pronunciation. Et is from the verb être to be. Être Last is ici here. Ici ici Altogether it's Oui, c'est ici. Yes, it's here. Oui, c'est ici. The pattern is... Avez-vous item? Do you have item? Avez-vous item? To use this pattern, simply replace the item placeholder with the thing you're looking for and its corresponding article. Imagine you're looking for milk. Le. 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 Is masculine and singular. Before. Le. Is. Du. Translating as any in this context. Du. Du. Is masculine singular to agree with. Le. Together. Du le. Any milk. Du lait. 
Say, do you have any milk? Ready? Avez-vous du lait? Do you have any milk? Avez-vous du lait? To use a pattern in this lesson, you'll need to know the number and gender of the thing you're asking for. Things like milk or salt are uncountable in French and English. You need to use a singular form regardless of quantity. The conversation introduces du which agrees with masculine singular nouns. However, there are several more forms of this article, which often translates as some or any. For a feminine singular noun, like confiture, jam, use de la, de la confiture, some jam or any jam. For both masculine singular and feminine singular nouns starting with a vowel, use de l. De l'argent, some money, or any money. De l'eau, some water, or any water. Things like apples are countable in both French and English. When there is more than one, you use the plural form. For both masculine and feminine nouns in the plural, use des, des pommes, some apples, or any apples. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Avez-vous du sel? Avez-vous du sel? Avez-vous du lait? Avez-vous du lait? Avez-vous du sucre? Avez-vous du sucre? Avez-vous de la confiture? Avez-vous de la confiture? Avez-vous des pommes? Avez-vous des pommes? Did you notice how I use a different pattern? Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. One. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. Two, practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And three, take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our Can Do course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Avez-vous des pommes? Do you have any apples? Avez-vous des pommes? Let's start with pommes. Apples. Pommes. Pommes. Instead of a singular, the plural is used because the word for apple is countable in French. In French, all nouns have grammatical gender and are either singular or plural. Pommes is masculine and plural, a fact that will determine the form of other words in the sentence. Before pom is the article de de is masculine and plural to agree with pom altogether avez-vous des pommes do you have any apples avez-vous des pommes Let's review the new words. Lait. Milk. Lait. Lait. Pomme. Apple. Pomme. Pomme. Sucre. Sugar. Sucre. Sucre. Confiture. Jam. Confiture. 
confiture. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember the formal way to say, excuse me? Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. And how to say salt? Sel. Sel. Do you remember how to say any salt? Du sel. Du sel. Do you remember how Sasha Lee asks, Excuse me, do you have any salt? Excusez-moi, avez-vous du sel? Excusez-moi, avez-vous du sel? Do you remember how to say yes? Oui. Oui. And how to say here? Ici. Ici. Do you remember how the clerk says, yes, it's here? Oui, c'est ici. Oui, c'est ici. Do you remember how to say milk? Lait. Lait. And how to say any milk? Du lait. Du lait. Do you remember how to say sugar? Sucre. Sucre. And how to say any sugar? Du sucre. Du sucre. Do you remember how to say apple? Pomme. Pomme. And how to say any apples? Des pommes. Des pommes. Let's practice. Imagine you're Sasha Lee, and you're at the grocery store. Get the shopkeeper's attention and ask if they have milk. Ready? Excusez-moi, avez-vous du lait? Oui, c'est ici. Listen again and repeat. Excusez-moi, avez-vous du lait? Excusez-moi, avez-vous du lait? Imagine you're Karen Lee, and you're at the grocery store to buy some apples. Ready? Excusez-moi, avez-vous des pommes? Oui, c'est ici. Listen again and repeat. Excusez-moi, avez-vous des pommes? Excusez-moi, avez-vous des pommes? Let's try one more. Imagine you're Ben Lee and you're at the grocery store to buy sugar. Ready? Excusez-moi, avez-vous du sucre? Oui, c'est ici. Listen again and repeat. Excusez-moi, avez-vous du sucre?
Excusez-moi, avez-vous du sucre? This is the end of this lesson. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Now you know how to ask if a store has something in French. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson.